So, hello everyone. Welcome to another QD Proxy SQL webinar. Um, in today's webinar, I'm gonna talk about the latest backend support of the Proxy SQL of the QD Provision Proxy SQL, and also I would uh, talk about some of the dashboard and alerts things that has been recently integrated with our QD Provision Proxy SQL. So, um, okay. So as you know that proxy scale is actually a MySQL protocol award proxy uh, uh, and QDB has got the support for uh, uh, proxy scale recently. And before we only supported the MySQL backend for the proxy scale server provisioned by QDB. But recently we have added the MariaDB and the Parcon Extra DB backend support for our QDB proxy scale. Uh, uh, if you have uh, followed our proxy school webinars, uh, you may know that before we only supported the KubeDB provision MySQL servers, but recently we also have added uh, external MySQLs, and uh, so it is not important or it's not necessary that your MySQL server is hosted by KubeDB. Just create a app binding for your MySQL server or MariaDB or Park Connector DB, whatever, and just mention it in the backend section in the proxy SQL YAML, and proxy SQL will automatically start proxying for those MySQL error servers. So, okay, uh, this is actually out of our scope, but today we are going to show only the MariaDB and Park Connector DB support for KubeDB proxy SQL and the proxy SQL dashboard and alerts. So, <clears throat> This is the table of content. Uh, and th the table of content actually means that I'm going to talk about these topics uh, one by one. First of all, I would uh, show you some basic of configuring the QDB proxy skill for the MariaDB backend. After that, I'd go for the Parcon DB backend. Uh, once I'm done with the new backends, then I would go for the Grafana dashboard JSONs that we have recently added for our QDB proxy skill. Uh, these are very basics and just added the features. And if we get any feature request, we would add them uh, as well. And finally, we are going to talk about some Prometheus alerts for the QDB proxy skill that we have added. And we would show you how easy it is to uh, set up the Prometheus alerts for QDB proxy skill. We have added some, some very basic alerts currently, and we are really working on it. If you want to uh, share your ideas that uh, some features may be integrated with the Keep the Proxy Skill Prometheus alert, then please let us know and we would, we would do that in future. So as for the resources, uh, you may refer to any of these links, uh, any of these doc links uh, here you can see in the screen. Uh, the proxy skill doc has recently updated. So please refer to the doc uh, if you want to know about the latest proxy skill. And now I am uh, I am on with the demonstration. First of all, uh, I, let me introduce you to my uh, <coughs> to my terminal setup. First of all, in this section, we can see the ports that are running in my kind cluster. Uh, in this section of the terminal, I'm going to uh, use this as the backend server administration or something like this. And here we would uh, do the proxy server things. And here we would do all the uh, client server, uh, all the client things in, in this terminal, in this part of this terminal. So, okay, now you can see that the QDB operator is running in my cluster and I have installed the QDB operator using this command you can see in the screen. Please uh, notice that the version is latest and if you want to replicate all the things uh, shown in this demo, will be shown in this demo, uh, please, uh, please set the version to the latest one. And here are some uh, TLS related things as we are going to test the uh, TLS features of the MariaDB backend and as for the proxy SQLs. So we need Cert Manager running in our cluster. Here you can see the Cert Manager ports are running. So I have installed the Cert Manager operator using this first command and then created a 
CA key CSR using this command with OpenSSL. And then I have uh, created uh, a secret in the demo name space, which is a TLS secret. Based on that TLS secret, I have created uh, two issuers, one for the MariaDB Parkona XDB backend and another one for the proxy backend, or for the proxy server. And these all are out of scope, but I am showing you just uh, generic ones. If you uh, want to learn deeper, please refer to our talk. So, okay, and here comes the final backend backends. You can see that our MariaDB and the XDB server is already running. The, both of them are C node Galera cluster. I've deployed them earlier uh, of the webinar uh, so that we may uh, complete everything in time because uh, it takes a bit of time, like four or five minutes to deploy. But uh, don't worry, I'm going to describe the YAML for you. So here, for as for the MariaDB backend, uh, we have used the uh, version 10.5.8. The replica count is three. That means uh, this is the MariaDB uh, Galera replication of three node. And the storage section, uh, you can see that this is this is not KubeDB specific. And we have uh, enabled the TLS. So uh, here you can see uh, issuer. I have created the issuer earlier uh, uh, before I deploy the MariaDB server and I have shown you how to deploy the issuer. And with this with this section, I have TLS secured our MariaDB server. Uh, same goes for the Parkona XDB server. And the settings are pretty much same for the MariaDB backend and the Parkona XDB backend. Just the version, version is different and the kind is different, but uh, everything else is pretty much same. So you can see here, the MariaDB server is up, the part next DB server is up. Uh, let's check a bit. Let's get MariaDB. So you can see this is ready. And you can see get PX. This is short term for part next DB. This is also ready. So now we are going to deploy a proxy SQL for that. Uh, first of all, we are going to deploy the proxy SQL for the MariaDB backend. So here you can see the proxy SQL YAML and uh, there's nothing extra than uh, which we used to deploy as for the MySQL backend and just change the mode to Galera and as for the backend.name just uh, mention the app binding name uh, for, of which server you want to proxy like if I want to do it for the MariaDB backend let's get the app binding here so I can see that the MariaDB server's app binding name is MariaDB server. So I have uh, mentioned it here. And I have TLS secured the proxy SQL. Uh, and finally, the sync user is true for the proxy SQL so that any user that is created in the MariaDB, uh, I don't need to manually go and get the username password and then put it uh, inside the proxy SQL. The proxy SQL operator will automatically fetch it from the backend server. So now let's deploy the proxy and then talk. So this will apply the chat proxy server. Okay, so. You can see the ports are coming up one by one. And let's watch it. Okay, so it is currently in the provisioning state. Uh, let's wait for it to be ready. It may take a minute or two to get ready. Okay, so you can see this is ready. So now uh, let's exit into the backend server first. Let's get into the MySQL. Uh, let's log in as the MySQL root user.
ओके तो फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल इफ़ द प्रोसेस के लिए इज़ वर्किंग करेक्टली देन द प्रोसेस के लिए ऑपरेटर शुड क्रिएट अ मॉनिटर यूज़र इनसाइड द मारेडीपी सर्वर एंड द मॉनिटर यूज़र नेम इज़ प्रोसेस के लिए सो लेट्स सी इफ़ इट इज़ क्रिएटेड ऑलरेडी सिलेक्ट यूज़र फ्रॉम so yeah here you can see the proxy skill user it is basically the monitor user for the proxy skill if you are aware of proxy skill you would you should know what is monitor user so this is actually out of scope uh, for our webinar now i guess we are ready to dig into the proxy server let's log in as the admin uh okay so let's select the host name from my sql servers okay so you can see that the mariadb server service is set as the host inside the proxy server uh if we see the service actually you can see this on this terminal you can see get as we see it as we know uh you can see that this service is basically used for the traffic queries uh, for trafficking the queries yeah so okay this is actually set as the host name inside the proxy server so that the proxy is actually uh, doing everything for particularly this mariadb plugin server so everything is going fine till now let's select the users username from mysql users Okay, so the root user is only fetched from the MariaDB backend as uh, we don't uh, fetch any system users here. So yeah, it is, it is also fine. Now let's create a user and see if, if the sync user is working properly for the proxy skill. So create user uh, test, uh, okay. Identified by us, a grant. All privileges. We are granting all the privileges, but uh, don't do this for for the for, on the productions. Yeah. Okay. So to, this is just to check everything is working fine. Okay. And flash privileges. Okay. So. As, uh, as, uh, as per the proxy skill sync user feature says that proxy skill now should fetch the user test from the MariaDB backend. And from this, we can check another feature that proxy skill is working fine with MariaDB. So, yeah, we can see that the test user has been fetched from the MariaDB backend. And it is uh, actually safe because. Uh, you see that no password is uh, fetched directly. All the hash string, uh, hashed or encrypted strings are only fetched here, and this works fine for the proxy skill. Now let's get exec into our client, and right now we will try to connect to the proxy server. Trying to uh, try to connect to the MariaDB server from this client through the proxy server. So what we would do is, and we would use the this credential, the newly created test user credential. So MySQL dash u test dash p pass dash h. Now the what would be the host name? The host name would be the proxy server service. And as we see, and the port number would be six zero three three as or the client only uses the 6033 and the admin uses the 6032. So first of all, you can see that this is a successful login. We have heated the proxy scale service and there's a successful MySQL login. Now let's check the host name, which host actually it is. There's, uh, if it has correctly uh, logged into the MariaDB, then any of these three ports uh, would be visible in the when I run this query to select host name. Okay, so it is the MariaDB server one. So the second pod, uh, that means that the client has 
uh, requested a connection to the proxy server and the proxy server has requested a connection to the MariaDB backend and from that point MariaDB has returned uh, MariaDB has opened a connection to the MariaDB server one port that means everything is going fine right now and okay so proxy school is working fine for the MariaDB and now we will check the TLS things so let's first of all uh, let's check the backend TLS backend TLS means if the proxy school to MariaDB connection is TLS secure so with this command we can see this uh, here you can see that uh, in the SSL section uh, cipher is being used that means this connection is encrypted so the proxy skill to MariaDB backend connection is encrypted now we would see the client to proxy skill server connection so select for this you need to run a query like select sessions paid us like uh, SSL cipher Mm. Okay. Have I done anything wrong? Status like cipher. Okay. Uh, I guess let's let's connect again. This should work. Mm. Have I done anything wrong here? All privileges on all the DBs to test and then flush privileges. Let's connect again and select session status. Okay. If an error in this case, I need to the manual and correspond to your my version. Mm. Oh. Okay, I think there are some problems going on here. Let's get another user. Test X. And all privileges. Okay, let's see. The test text is also here. Mm, let's try to connect. Okay, I guess. Oh, <laughs> well, I was actually uh, querying uh, with select, but the correct index is is show. So I was uh, I was just running the wrong query. Select session status that that should have been show session status like SSL cipher. So okay, so this is all fine right now. Let's check with uh, with the test user. So. Session status like sorry. Okay, so we can see uh, uh, this line to proxy connection is also using an SSL encryption. So the TLS thing is working uh, fine for the MariaDB backend as for the proxy SQL server. Now uh, let's uh, do the same process for the proxy SQL uh, for the XADB backend. And before that, let's just uh, 
Let's delete this first. Delete password still. Delete password. This is enough. Let's see. Okay. We should be deleted. Uh, in the meanwhile, let's uh, let's log into the let's log into the extra db server and create a user for testing okay here are a lot of user here okay the proxy skill is deleted so now let's go and apply it just change the name to the extra db server and everything will go fine apply the server okay this is created let's uh uh just wait for the post to come up okay the posts are coming up if we see that the monitor user is already created in the pattern extra db server now let's create a let's create a user to create user just Fight by us. Yeah, run all we will address on test. We will address. Okay, so let's again to the pod oh uh, we thought that let's check if the box actually is ready yet okay so box actually is ready now yeah we, we are logged into the box actual server let's log in as the admin Okay, yeah, so we can see that the test user is already fetched from the proxy uh, from the part of the backend, and now, uh, now we uh, we are going to do the same thing, same thing for the part of the backend. Okay, let's exec into this, uh, the same password, same credential, and uh, <laughs> the server name is same, so nothing has changed actually. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, so yeah, it's a successful login. Let's select the host name first. Okay, so we are connected to the HDB backend. Now, now let's see the ELS. So the backend connection is using uh, using encryption. Nice. Now, now as for the front end connection, so sessions with us. I. Okay, so the front end connection is also TLS secure. And now let's run some queries. So databases. So kindly there is no database here. Now, now let's uh, write something. So create database. Okay. Okay. Let's check in the backend. Okay, so the okay is created. So use the database. Uh, let's create a table. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, it, it is only uh, with a name like party and primary key name. Okay, so if we see here, it is is it reflected or not? Show tables. Okay. Insert into the book of name values. Let me entry, enter my name. Uh, let me enter my senior's name. Okay, so like all from okay dot okay, okay. So the 
uh, write query is going smooth. Let's do a read query. Select all from okay. Dot, okay, okay. okay, so you can see the write query is going fine. Read query is going fine as well. The connection in the back end and the front end is still secured. So everything works smoothly as proxy server did with the MySQL uh, backend. So now as for the MariaDB and the PyConnectDB backend, the proxy SQL is going uh, smooth and doing everything, uh, everything fine. So with this, I am a, in, at the end of my first part of the demo, which is the MariaDB and PyConnectDB backend for the proxy SQL. So now, now in the second part, I'm going to show uh, the dashboard and the alert things uh, for the, for the, uh, for QD version proxy scale. Now, uh, as you know, uh, to monitor everything uh, we need uh, with Prometheus, we need Prometheus operator running in our kind cluster. So for that, we are, we have used this, this command to install the Prometheus operator in our kind cluster. And you can see that with this command, we, we are, uh, we have gained these pods in our cluster. These are all uh, deployed by the Prometheus operator. And as for the Panopticon, this is one of the, uh, one of the QDB, uh, QDB feature. Okay, Panopticon is actually a QDB operator which helps us to uh, monitor our uh, our some of our own matrices uh, to generate and monitor our uh, some of our own matrices through Prometheus. Like when we install this uh, Panopticon and uh, QDB uh, QDB matrix server, we would uh, we would end up with some of the uh, some of the things like uh, QDB matrix configurations. We will talk about it a, a bit later, but we have used these commands to set up all the uh, necessary things for our uh, dashboard and alert, uh, alert demo. So here you can see the Panopticon is running and, and then the Prometheus Grafana is running, the alert manager is running. Okay, and now we have already deployed a proxy SQL server. We have uh, already configured everything related to the monitoring. Now it is time to see how it is working. So here, uh, first of all, uh, as for, as for uh, making the monitoring experience a bit smoother, we have provided some basic uh, monitoring JSONs uh, for the QDB proxy scales. You would find the JSONs in this Git repo. Uh, these, these, these links are actually uh, here for, uh, for the monitoring JSONs, uh, JSONs Git repo. So if you go into this link, you would find the JSONs using which you can monitor the QDB proxy scale. So here is the actual Git repo and here you can see the monitoring uh, things that, oh, okay, so I need to actually port forward all the things first. Let's see, port forward. This is, Okay, so this with this board for this board uh, for the Prometheus Grafana board, uh, we need to put forward it to the service. You see, it is which is. We see this, uh, sorry, sorry. This should be in the monitoring. So from this service, we can actually uh, log into the Prometheus Grafana. So, yeah. 
we can see here all the things. Uh, if I if I show you from the very beginning, we we have forwarded the port to four thousand and one. You would end up with, uh, into something like this, and here you can see the <laughs> dashboards are already there. The proxy SQL summary. In the proxy SQL summary, I, I am going to describe it in a uh, in a while. Uh, and uh, proxy SQL pod. There is another dashboard for you. And here, uh, uh, this this contains a lot of lot of matrices. So uh, a lot of panels and uh, dashboards. So uh, it is it is divided into some some of the sections. Here you can see we can uh, collapse and enlarge all the sections. And as for the final one, the proxy SQL summary is here. Uh, yeah. So we actually provide these three uh, three JSONs for the for monitoring cube deprivation proxy scale. And if I just show you uh, that how to actually import this, uh, just go to this this Git repo, open any one of the um, link that you any one of the JSON that you want to see, and then just copy it from here. Just copy it from here and just import it right here uh, probably there's something wrong with the copying this is the copy is done correctly now yeah if you load uh it would show you that uh, same name already exists that uh, as i have already loaded it before uh, okay uh don't worry let's let's change a bit database uh for demo let's change it and let's change the uid let's put an x right after and you can see that the uh, whole dashboard has been loaded here so you can do the same thing for uh for all the three three jsons that I, we have provided through this git repo and uh, if you go to this link you can see some of the demonstration is already there now uh, okay let's not waste any more any more time here just uh, show you what uh, what is in there. So first of all, as for the PB proxy skill board uh, dashboard, you can see that uh, you can see the pods are running on here. The pod name will be shown in this panel. Uh, for how long it is running, it, it will be shown here. The memory usages and the CPU usages, you can see. Uh, the connection, uh, aborted connections, and uh, running connections, everything you can see here. So this is pretty much like, uh, and and also you can you can just select any any of the port. Like if you want to see only for the port one, then it will show you uh, like this. Only for the port one, uh, everything is showing here. And you can you can select the namespaces as currently we only are. Uh, we're only running proxy school in inside demo namespace and no other namespace contains any of the proxy school server. So, so uh, there's no use of selecting other namespaces right now. So, yeah. And as for the proxy school summary, uh, it is uh, it is kind of designed for uh, for getting you with some of the some of the summaries of of a proxy school server and you can explore it yourself and see uh, what are here mm, yeah and in this section it is basically based on the connections and the, how the proxy SQL is connecting or communicating with the mariadb backend all the uh, insights you will get from here definitely okay uh, and yeah these are all uh, now the interesting part is oh uh, and another thing is you need to install this helm chart which i have shown in the uh, which i have already shown in the uh, slide because this will uh, get some crds named proxy scale and also named mysql matrix configuration sorry if do matrix configuration so you can see this matrix configuration dash a so you can see with this helm chart uh, this installs all these 
uh, matrix configuration. This is another CRD of TBDB. If you want to learn more, you can go to the docs. Okay, so now comes the alert part. Uh, to actually uh, see the alert thing. Uh, okay, let's let's jump into this. Okay, so to see the alert, uh, first of all, we are uh, we have put forwarded. Uh, we have put forwarded this. Uh, this terminal is uh, was running uh, in the side screen. So we have port forwarded this service to the 9090 uh, port. This is actually forwarding the Prometheus thing. So if you see that in the localhost 9090, in the Prometheus alert section, we are we are watching this this we are watching this. So and you may wonder that how how did all these things come? Actually, to install this, we have uh, provided a Helm chart, and this is the uh, Git repo or GitHub link of this Helm chart. You can just download it locally and then install the Helm chart uh, with your proxy server name. I'll, I'll I'll show you right now how to do it. Uh, Okay, so this is our uh, this is our Helm chart. First of all, uh, let me give you a high level overview. What this Helm chart actually do? This Helm chart actually installs one uh, Prometheus rule or deploys one Prometheus rule inside our cluster. And if you were aware of the Prometheus alert thing, uh, you know that to actually look up for something to uh, fire alert you need a prometheus rule and based on the prometheus rule the prometheus will uh, fire uh, prometheus and the alert manager will fire alerts so we have created something uh, something like this uh, with the helm chart we are going to actually deploy the uh, prometheus rule and in the prometheus rules you can see um, if we get the prometheus rule right now if we get for Prometheus rule, okay. As for the proxy scale server, we have we have this Prometheus rule deployed, and as for the fire, uh, as for the alerts, we have introduced these basic alerts uh, for our KubeDB proxy scale, and the main concept is. You can use this value file, and you can edit uh, edit the uh, values here. And with the Helm chart, uh, this will actually deploy that Pro Prometheus rule that is necessary for us. Okay, we will see the output uh, later. Uh, let's first see what are uh, there in the Prometheus rule. So we have configured uh, something like the proxy skill instance down. So. What uh, what is the final output of this? This is like uh, this is like this. This uh, what uh, this particular Prometheus rule does is when one of the port goes down for, of the proxy scale server you are watching, the this would uh, fire an alert. And same thing goes for the service down thing. This would do the same when the whole proxy server goes down, it will fire an alert. There is something like too many connections. Like if you set the value to 80, then what it would do that when the proxy scale is uh, is handling connections of like 80% of the maximum connection allowed, the Prometheus, uh, the yes, the alert manager will fire an alert. So, if you uh, go through this YAML or go to this value file, these are pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, that what it does, you can you can get it from the name, and what uh, functionalities are configurable is also uh, quite uh, self-explanatory. Uh, and if you go through this file, you can you can get it uh, definitely. So now let's see uh, some demo over this proxy scale alert thing. And 
I have installed or I have deployed this with the Helm chart using the command like uh, when I am going to uh, as my proxy server name is proxy server. Uh, so I have I I just run this command on my terminal. The Helm install my proxy server name and the dash n proxy server namespace. And this is the path actually in the, in this path, the Helm chart is uh, written or the Helm chart is in this path. So yeah, in this slide, you can see uh, the command. So I have already deployed it and the Helm chart has installed an proxy, uh, a, a Prometheus rule for this. And based on this rule, you can see the, the alerts have been configured inside the Prometheus server or the alert manager. So now let's see some demonstrations. Uh, as in my cluster, as in my cluster, you can see that the proxy server is, is running fine. Uh, what I'm going to do, I, I would just restart all these ports and I would do with an with an ops request here. If you uh, if you are not aware of ops request, please go to our doc and you see uh, the details there. And what and later on we will see the after effects in the alert. Uh, one thing I want to mention that a, in every uh, single part of this value file. I have set the duration to zero minutes. This is uh, not a production grid, but I have uh, set it to zero minute uh, uh, so that uh, once I am uh, facing some trouble, the fire should, uh, the alert should fire instantly because I don't have much time uh, in this webinar to actually uh, demonstrate you with five minutes or 10 minutes of duration to uh, give an alert before firing. So, yeah. Now let's apply the restart obsequious. Okay, so the restart obsequious has been created. Let's watch it over here. It will get obsequious. Okay, so this is the progressing phase. Let's see what type of alerts are firing. Okay, so first of all, you can see that two of the alerts have been firing. One is the proxy skill instance down and another one is the proxy skill phase critical. Uh, if you see, uh, get proxy scale. So yeah, the proxy server phase is critical. So the alert has been fired. And another thing is why when the restart of secret is running, first uh, this port was deleted and it has been restarted. So uh, if you have noticed, it was in the terminating phase. You can see it right now for the proxy one server mm -hmm. uh, proxy server one for this is terminating so yeah th that particular occurrence has fired this uh this alert so let's refresh it again okay two more alerts have been fired uh two no not two three more uh, alerts have been fired one is the proxy will be started as one instance has been restarted i've shown you and another one is the proxy skill obsequious on progress. So this is uh, this particular alert fires when an proxy skill obsequious in, in progress. And you can see here the restart obsequious in on progress. In the production grid, you may uh, set the time time duration for five minutes or 10 minutes. Like if it uh, if a uh, proxy skill of is running or progressing for five minutes or 10 minutes, then it, it should fire an alert. But here I have set it to zero minute. Uh, the reason I have explained to you already. 
that's why that's why it has fired instantly so yeah this is uh, one and the uh, status progressing too long this is another one as i have uh, as i've shrinked the uh, time for this alert too so okay uh, okay so we can see the fire uh, the alerts are alerts are working fine uh, now let's check this this alert this is an interesting alert uh, this is proxy skill too many connections so here in the uh, while deploying the prometheus rule we have we have set this to 80 like when the connection uh, connection count is about 80 percent about 80 percent of the max connection then this uh LRF, this fire should be alert this alert should be fired so but uh, how many connections do we have currently so let's check and let's see how can we fire an alert for this so if still let's see if still Select uh no. Let's see what is the max connection allowed. Show variables like. Okay, so the max connection is allowed 2048. So it's a lot. Uh, so to achieve 80% of it, 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 it's a challenge right now in this webinar. So let's change the value. So set uh, SQL X connections. Okay, and load. My SQL. You can do the same thing with the pre-configure variable of SQL, but just for this webinar, I'm doing it from the terminal and from the admin panel. Okay, my SQL, uh, my SQL variables. To time. Uh, okay, so I guess this is all fine. Yeah, I can see this is all fine. And now, if I create one single connection with this proxy SQL, you would see that uh, this would be 100% of the max uh, allowed connection. So the alert should fire after that. Okay, let's uh, do the same thing that we did earlier. And uh, this was the this was the URL. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the connection okay okay now, now select okay it is it is working fine and now now this too many connection alert should be fair yeah and and as you can see the proxy skill too many connections alert has been fired <laughs> so actually these alerts and the rules regarding these alerts are pretty much self-explanatory. We have just uh, shown that it is really easy to set up some alerts for KubeDuo proxy scale. You can add something if you want, uh, as 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 you know, uh, which suits you best. And also you can do some feature requests to us so that we can improve our product. And the rest of the, uh, rest of the alerts uh, I, I can give you an overview of that uh, of those like uh, the process will cluster sync failure this this will fire when the when you have deployed a proxy skill cluster and uh, synchronization have somehow mismatched and it has been like running for a uh, time being uh, then uh, this cluster sync failure alert will fire the proxical instance down i have shown it the proxical server down uh, fires when the when there is no proxy sql uh, server available in the cluster that it is looking for 
in that case this proxies will service down uh, alert will fire the proxies will too many connections i have shown it okay so uh, another interesting uh, another interesting alert is the proxies will slow queries if if we if we just uh, do this slip slip 20 this is a slow query so for a slow query it will fire and you can actually manipulate for uh, the number that for how many slow queries after how many slow queries and uh, for how long uh, after uh, how long should it take before uh, the alert should fire you can you can, you can easily configure all, all of these things so the slow queries will come up in a minute or two whatever and the proxy school is started i have shown you when any of the instances restarted this alert is fired high incoming bytes and high outgoing bytes these are self-explanatory so when there is a lot of a lot of bytes uh, received and sent from uh, over the proxy SQL server this uh, alert will fire and you can configure the threshold with the you know, with the way i have shown you and with the with the value file actually and proxy school on progress uh, obsequious on progress obsequious is just spending too long this i have shown and the obsequious failed fire uh, alert this is also important because you don't want uh, any of your proxy school uh, obsequious to be failed and if any any of those gets failed you would receive an alert and phase not really critical these are all based on the proxy school phase that are actually not ready and uh, not not intended not expected like we we want our proxy school to be ready all the time so if if it goes outside of the ready so for the not ready and the critical phase it would definitely alert a fire it would definitely fire an alert so these two words are actually uh, whatever okay so you can get the alert repo here the link uh, is given in the uh, in the slide or in the comment section you add it later okay so it was pretty much it for the proxy scale alert dashboard and the mariadb python extra db backend now if you have any question you can ask this in the comment box shall we stop sharing okay so here we can see some of the mm, mm, some of the questions okay so first of all uh, alexi uh, smirnov has asked that can proxy skill be used for analyzing google cloud sql db queries uh, no, actually, we haven't set up uh, proxy SQL for to analyze the Google Cloud SQL SQL DB queries currently. Uh, it is only set up for MySQL, MariaDB, and the Park Next DB backend. Uh, yeah, and then Mediason has asked. Uh, we had support for external MySQL backend. For that, you had to create an app binding and defer as proxy SQL backend. Yeah, I, yeah, I have mentioned this. Uh, and we had to test against to Google Cloud SQL. Okay, so so uh, Mediason has already replied to Alexis Minov, and okay. And if you actually want to know more about uh, Proxy SQL and what it supports right now, please refer to our Proxy SQL talk. It is it has been recently updated and it it has many details to actually make people understand about our product so yeah that is all from uh for now and uh, really i would appreciate if you have uh, any kind of suggestion that we can uh, use for our betterment of uh, of our product so yeah till then thank you thank you very much everyone So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for our, for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. 
Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.